everyone. Conducting a QC checklist before use is utmost importance due to several key reasons. The primary reason for crane inspection is to prioritize safety. QCs are large, complex machineries capable of lifting and moving heavy loads. And any malfunction or failure, like object falling, leads to serious accidents, injuries, or even fatalities. Additionally, a thorough check allows for adjustments and calibration, optimizing performance and productivity. Prioritizing machine checks safeguards both operators and equipment, enhancing overall operational effectiveness. Before starting the inspection, it is crucial to inform the operator through the intercom. Ensure that everyone on the crane is aware that you will be conducting an inspection. Pay special attention when engineering places warning tags on the gantry console panel or ladder entrance. This is to ensure the safety of workers above and operator doing the checklist. Unexpected movements can be done by technical staff working above. Take a walk around both the seaside and landside gantry areas. Carefully checking for any potential gantry brake oil leakages and ensuring that wheel chocks have been properly placed on the brackets. Inspect the gantry buffer and gantry wheel guards for any signs of damage or wear. Thoroughly examine the travelling path for any obstructions, paying special attention to obstructions on HV cable rails and gantry rails. It is essential to check the tie-down pins with particular attention to the two safety pins. Numerous accidents have occurred when tie-down pins collided with the ground pits and other objects. This happens when the pin gradually moves downwards over time forcing the extended arm to strike the ground. Once the ground checks are completed, position safety cones on both sides of the truck then to lower the spreader. Open the gantry console panel, turn on the control and proceed to lower the spreader. Now the procedure is differs when an operator is already inside the cabin. In such cases, you can instruct the operator to lower the spreader, expediting the process. Set the spreader to the 40 feet mode and thoroughly inspect the flipper, actuator, spreader ladders, twin jacks and main beams for any damages. Pay special attention to the mounting bolts of the flipper and actuator. Additionally, focus on the gable end plates as they are prone to frequent collisions. It is crucial to check the availability and condition of safety pins on the spreader head block chain. Additionally, inspect the rope guards on the head block sheaves for any signs of damage. Thoroughly inspect the underside of the spreader with special attention to tie plates, TTDS sensors, and tension rods for any signs of damage. Under no circumstances should you go to underneath the spreader for inspection. Instead, you can approach closely and carefully observe the mentioned parts. Please remember to adhere this safety precaution. Upon completing the spreader inspection, proceed directly to the QC cabin. Please ensure to check the condition of the fire extinguisher near the entrance and specifically condition of the seal and safety lock pin. Close the gates securely and safely climb up the ladder, ensuring to always follow the three-point contact rule. Elevator doors must be opened carefully. Never use the foot to support the activity. While using the elevator, take the opportunity to check the functionality of the elevator lights and exhaust fan. Also check the condition of the fire extinguisher inside the elevator and specifically the condition of the seal and safety lock pin. If it is necessary to boom down the crane before operation, take that opportunity to perform the boom related checks. However, 
if it is not required you can step this step and conduct the checks during any boom operation throughout the shift however it is mandatory to perform the check at least once during the shift while walking towards the boom cabin seize the opportunity to inspect the hoist ropes and trolley shape condition look for any signs of overlapping or damages to the ropes Upon entering the boom cabin, carefully inspect the boom ropes for any abnormalities before proceeding to boom down. Pay close attention to any abnormal sounds during the operation. If you notice any abnormalities, promptly inform the engineering department without delay. Now, proceed to the cabin and ensure to gently close the cabin gate upon entering. The first step is to adjust the seat height and backrest to your preferred position. It is mandatory to wear and properly adjust the seat belt. Utilize the lamp test option in the auxiliary panel to verify the functionality of all indications inside the cabin. This will ensure that each indicator is in working order. Before starting, check the human machine interface, which is known as fault display for any faults or errors. Additionally, verify the functionality of the intercom system and base radio sets. Verify that all spreader functions are working properly, including the telescopic function, flipper up-down operation, and twin jack function. Checking the hoist height is very important. Hoist height once the spreader lowered to the ground position shall be keep within minus 0.1 to plus 0.1 meters. And the weight while carrying the empty spreader shall be within minus 1 to 1 ton. If there is any deviation, immediately inform engineering and correct the same. Lastly, when balancing the spreader while lowering it to the back reach, check the display height and display weight to ensure the accuracy. Use TTDS bypass key to slug the hoist ropes and check for any permanent bends. During operation, carefully inspect the SMG bus bar for any abnormalities, such as crow nest. Additionally, pay close attention to any abnormal vibrations or sounds that may occur while trolling. This is how you perform a thorough check as a responsible operator. By conducting such a comprehensive check, you become so familiar with the crane you operate. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more engaging videos in the near future.